In this video, we're going to show you how to add rooms to an estimate. Let's go ahead and click on an estimate. We're going to go to Add a Room up here at the top left. And the first thing I'd like to do is show you this little Options button right up here. Uh, this Options button has a opportunity to choose rooms from a list. So let's go ahead and take a look at the list. Now this is an editable list. I created this. Uh, you can edit it. I'm going to show you that other button in just a moment. Um, or you can just use it as it is. Uh, you can add or delete from it. But let's go ahead and choose bedroom one. Let's say bedroom one, closet one, bedroom two. Let's give bedroom two, two closets. And I don't know, uh, a master bedroom, a master bathroom, maybe exterior, uh, some contents manipulation, and I don't know, let's put a roof in. And then just click add these rooms. And that's a whole lot faster than, than typing all those rooms out, you know, especially if you're not a fast typer. Uh, another way of doing it is to just, you know, click inside these cells and just type. Let's add, uh, let's add a general category and let's add some additional living expenses. And let's come up here and get started doing the dimensioning. Uh, it's real easy to dimension an iScope. You can use decimals or you can use commas. So if you wanted to enter, um, you know, 10 comma 9 or 10.75, both are the same thing, okay? Um, let's go ahead and dimension these. I'm going to show you just how fast this can be. Uh, by the way, when you hit uh, the uh, enter key, uh, it's going to automatically tab back to the next room. It's smart like that. So, um, let's see, 20, let's see, Okay, and so we're done dimensioning. Uh, now, let, let's say we want to go ahead and add some openings. Let's go to this, uh, let's go ahead and click here on the bedroom one opening section. Let's add a couple of 2 doors. Just click the button twice and it adds two doors right here. And then let's add in a 3 door. Let's add a couple of windows. Let's, uh, three by, three by four, a four by five, and a missing wall by by six. Now, these are just kind of uh, for quick entry, these buttons here, all right? Um, you can also actually put in, you know, your own custom dimensions. Just You just can't do it in this screen. And I'm going to show you that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, so let's go over here. We've added some openings. You've seen how to do that. Let's go ahead and add an offset. Um, and let's go, actually, let's go ahead and change the height. I, I didn't tell you about this yet. This is the height of the room. Uh, the default height can be uh, set in the global setting. So you've, if you're, you know, working in homes that had 10 foot ceilings, you don't have, you don't want to have to type 10 foot each time. You just go in there to the global settings and change it to 10 foot. And every time you open the add rooms dialog, this will all be 10. Uh, but let's go ahead and change this one to 10. All right, and let's add an offset. So to add an offset, you're just going to click in this cell right here, and it's going to bring this offset dialog up for you. So let's go ahead and enter in uh, 5, 6, and then 5.5. Uh, it's got a 10-foot height. You notice it, 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 it knows uh, what height your room is, and it gives your offset the same height. Then you're going to click the Add button. Okay, and to click to, to add another one, you just go ahead and click back in there, three foot by four foot seven, and click add. And that's pretty much all there is to adding offsets. Uh, and let's go ahead and let's see, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Oh, here's your options button. This is the manage room name suggestions. All right, so if you wanted to come over here. Room names that are checked will appear in the suggestion list when typing a, uh, when uh, keying in a new room name, okay. These are all the rooms that I've used lately, okay. Uh, so when you're typing in bedroom, it's going to try to finish that for you. So, whoops, let me go ahead and type in bedroom. And you see how it's trying to finish that for me. Sometimes we... Um, 
we we tend to add room names that are that are kind of unique to a certain house like uh i don't know nook number five <laughs> okay probably never going to use that again but the problem is that once you use it uh, it's going to remember it okay because it, it wants to to help you type it in the next time so uh what you would do is after after doing 15 or 20 estimates you may have some uh, some room names in here, like nook, nook number five. Uh, here's one called test that I've done lately. And uh, you may not want it suggesting that room to you. So you just come over here and you just uncheck that and hit apply. And then it's not going to suggest you know, the test room or the nook number five or anything again. So anyway, let's go ahead and add these 12 rooms to the estimate. And there they are. Now, um, I should have left one of these undimensioned, but I didn't. Uh, this is bedroom one, all right? Uh, it's green. That means it has, di it has been dimensioned. Over here, you'll see that I, you know, obviously didn't dimension contents manipulation or roofing. Uh, and they're red. And the reason they're red is because they haven't been dimensioned. It doesn't, iScope wants to let you know that you may have forgotten to dimension a room. Uh, let's go ahead and add another couple of rooms. I don't know. Um, bedroom number five, bedroom number six. And I'm not going to dimension those. Okay, and here they are. I'm going to show you this later, but you can, you know, you can drag these up there. Okay, I'm going to go into more into this later but um, let's let's uh, I, since I didn't dimension them in the add room dialog the second place to dimension them and the more powerful place to dimension them is this dimensions tab you have a tasks tab here and a dimensions tab okay let's go over here into the dimensions tab okay uh, you want to try and use the add room dialog to do most of your dimensioning because this is slower I mean it allows you to to, to be more detailed Okay, but it's slower. So let's go ahead and add dimensions. 10 foot 6, 5 foot 6, hit OK, and you'll see that this room, bedroom number 5, is now green. So you click on it, and once it's been dimensioned, it's going to automatically take you back to the Tasks tab. It doesn't want to leave you in the Dimensions tab and make you press the tax, uh, Tasks tab. So let's go back to Dimensions. All right, you can see there's the dimensions for that room. Uh, and then if you want to add some offsets, you just click the Add button over here, and it's going to take you to the Offset dialog. So let's say, I don't know, 4 by 6. And then if you want to add uh, in, uh, inside the offsets, a door, maybe a window, press save and exit, and that takes care of that. Uh, and here's some openings. Uh, if you want to add some openings, you can do that. Now, like I said, this this uh, uh, dimensioning dialog is uh, allows you to actually you know, put in custom dimensions. So if you had a, a door that was three foot three wide and, uh, or a, you know, let's, let's, right now it's a missing wall. Let's make it into a door. by nine foot high uh, and it opens to exterior okay you can choose where the where the door is going to open you can press OK and there you have it uh, and so you can you can add a, a lot more uh, detail to your dimensions in this screen but it, you can see how it's not near as fast to enter dimensions in this room as it would be right here Okay, just a whole lot quicker because this is more of a spreadsheet format. Okay, it's made for, for quick entry. So you want to try and use the add room dialog as much as possible, although, you know, in some cases it's going to be necessary to go to the dimensions tab to add in those, those detailed dimensions. And so uh, I think that's just about it for the dimensioning. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about, uh, about the... Uh, the rooms and whatnot in the in the next video. Thanks.